Hi, my name is Benson Simmons. I'm an award-winning Canadian actor and acting teacher. I uh, recently moved to L.A. to further my acting career. One of the reasons I'm putting this together is for my many, many students across Canada who hate me now because I've moved to L.A. and I'm no longer available to teach you guys. So what I thought I would do is put some stuff on tape to re-inspire you. So before you have an audition, before you going to a shoot before you're putting something on tape, you can go through the basics with me and get re-inspired. The other reason is I am in LA. I'm going to be teaching just one class because I'm busy with my own career and I need to get some really great students in to fill up the class. So if you're inspired by this, you can reach me at applaud or die at hotmail.com, which you'll see later. So the first thing I want to do is again tell you what the basics are, re-inspire you, get you going. It's based, a lot of my, of my technique is based on this book. There's a great book, get it, go out now, buy it. It's called The Power of the Actor by Ivana Chubbuck. I've mixed a variety of techniques throughout my career. Meisner technique, I studied that in New York. Many other techniques, but 12 years ago, I started studying with Ivana Chubbuck, and her technique for me made the most sense. It got me inspired, it got me empowered when I go to auditions and when I work on set. So, let's start off. What is the most, the most important thing for an actor when you first break down a script? When you first get your audition? Yes, the most important thing is objective. Objective is the most important thing in any scene. An actor has to have your objective. So what is your objective? Basically, you say, you look at a text and you say, if I'm this character in this scene, what do I want from the other person? What do I need from the other person? First mistake is don't go, I want love, I want power, I want whatever. It's got to be specific to another person. So the way we set it up, remember, we say, I need that person too. I need that person to fall in love with me. I need that person to give me back my power. I need that person to um, be my friend. I need that person to want to sleep with me. Whatever the objective is, you've got to translate it into a need so that in the scene you are going to change that other person. When you walk into an audition room, what is your objective? To change that other person and have them give you what you want. Okay, so that is the most important thing. Now, again, people have, in class, I've been in class as an actor, and I've also, uh, so many of my students have said, well, my objective in the scene is to just get out, just to leave. Okay, it's never going to be about leaving unless you have two lines and that's what it is. But if you're in a room with somebody and you choose on some level to stay in a room with somebody, you always have an objective. Because the point of, as actors, what we're doing is we're breaking down what's going on subconsciously. When you're in the moment, you're not thinking, but at, at a subconscious level, you have a desire, a need to get something from the other person. So always, what we do is we go into that character, read the text. What do I need from the other person? What would I want from the other person in this situation? Then what we do is we personalize it. So say I need the person to fall in love with me. Then I go to my own life and I go, okay, who in my life, well that's going to substitution, but who in my life do I need love from in a specific way? But we'll come back to that. So again, break down the text, analysis in terms of what do I need? What do I need from the other person? Objective. How do I need to change them in the scene? Now, of course, what's really important, what we talk, and every teacher says to you, you know, like, it's so important to make, it, make the stakes life or death. In other words, the importance of getting your objective is life or death. Problem is most teachers don't know how to get you to have that emotional need to drive a scene. Because that's what it is. Once you have the objective and you have the need, the passionate need to drive a scene, you will drive the scene. You will be going after your objective from the second you're on camera. Not when your line starts, but the second you're on camera, the second you're in a scene, the second that you're on uh, stage or whatever, you will be going after your objective. So again, that's another important thing. Your objective will never change during a scene. It will always have a through line. You will always be going after your objective with a need. I'll talk later about how we get the stakes high. So once you have your objective, right, you've broken that down, you know what your objective is, you know what the character wants, then we go to what the obstacle. And an obstacle is something that makes it difficult in the circumstances for the person to go after the objective. So the most obvious example would be, I'm on a date, I need this girl to fall in love with me, my obstacle is, my ex just told me I'm a worthless piece of shit, I'll never meet anybody, I just lost my job, I don't feel confident, all those things, all those personal insecurities that we have. Now again, for the character, you, you, they will be um, in the text. It could be the character's lost his job. It could be the character uh, that, that, that um, the woman he's trying to impress is out of his league. 
So already that sets up obstacles, which makes it difficult to go after the objective. So that's what we want. We want to, you can't, if it's too easy, it's boring. Nobody wants to watch something that's too easy. But what we want to watch, what we're inspired to watch, is people who fight through the obstacle and still go after their objective. So again, obstacle, always something that is within the text and also something that you need to personalize it. So if you think that the character has insecurities, then you need to go to your own insecurities. And when when you're on a date or when you're trying to impress, I mean, the most obvious example is you're trying to impress a casting director, right? And again, it seems like so much is at stake for the actor when you're with a casting director or a director or a producer. What's the objective? Subconsciously, you just want them to love you. You want them to fall in love with you. And again, what's at stake is you're, at the time, you're thinking your whole career. This person could change your entire career. So the obstacles are your own insecurities, your insecurities of maybe you haven't, you don't think you've done enough in the business to get this person interested in you, all those personal insecurities become the obstacle. Now, we don't play the obstacle. You don't just fall. Only Woody Allen plays the obstacle. But all, what you will do is you'll, you'll feel like crap inside, but you're going to fight through that and, you know, get the person impressed with you or get the person to laugh or get the person to feel comfortable to open up to you. Whatever it is, again, driven by the objective, the need, say, in that situation, actor, casting director, to get them to fall in love with you, to get them to love you. So we've talked about objective and obstacle. What I thought I would do is show you a little monologue and show you how you can take text from anywhere, make it into an objective, have a clear objective and obstacle, and go after what you want. What I've chosen is a Shakespearean sonnet. It starts with when in disgrace with fortune in men's eyes. And again, it's a short sonnet, but we can take that and make it into a clear objective, clear obstacle. And what I'll do is I'll break it down for you very quickly. The, the words are when in disgrace with fortune in men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcome state. And so what I've done is I've taken it, I've taken the inner workings of it and saying, I've been fucking up and the woman that I love has seen me just get totally indulgent in my career and I feel like I'm going to lose her. And what I'm doing in this monologue is saying, I've screwed up, I've done everything, but then I remember you, you're the most important person in the world. Take me back. Love me again. So that's what I'm doing. So that's the objective and it will be a Shakespearean monologue. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state and uh, trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate. Yeah, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like, oh, like him with friends possessed, desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy, content at least. And in these thoughts myself, almost despising, happily I think on thee. <laughs> and then my state like to the lark at break of day arising sings hymns at heaven's gate. Yeah, for thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. See, so, you now what I'm doing there is I'm not going to break. I'm not going to, when I say my stake, I'm, basically what I'm saying is like, because then I don't care who else is out there, who, what other fucked up things, I care about you. And then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising, sing, oh, sorry, that's not the line. Oh, then it's, um, oh, fuck. It's, um, such wealth brings that then I scorn to change my state with kings. See, it's you. And I'm going to look at you like I love you so much. And I'm going to keep that going until the cut. I'm not going to stop and then say, oh, thank you very much in an audition. I'm keep that going. Keep whatever action, even if you don't have a line, keep whatever action you're going after. Get the person to feel loved. Get the person to feel your pain. Keep that going. Then let them cut. That's going to impress them at an audition.